Hey all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a reboot of a video that I have done in the past. So this video idea was started by Dolly Mama Beauty here on YouTube. I'm gonna link her video down below. But this is where I'm going to look over different eyeshadow palettes that are in my collection and let you know that if they came out today, would I repurchase them? Now, a few things before I get started. Number one, I have recently done a bunch of eyeshadow palette declutters. So that means if something is still in my collection, which all of these palettes I'm gonna talk about, I think there are eight palettes that I'm gonna talk about today, seven palettes, seven palettes. All seven of these palettes that I'm gonna talk about today are still in my collection because I want to keep them, because I do love them, because they spark joy. But there are some of these, I'm not gonna lie, that when I look at these, I'm like, if they came out today, would I repurchase them? And the answer is gonna be no, but I'm gonna explain why for each of these. Also, I do wanna say in my last video, which was my recap of my September low buy and how I did, I realized that approximately every five seconds when I was editing, all I saw was me going, and no, I'm not on cocaine. I have a vicious sinus infection right now. I tend to get this every time it goes from summer into fall and it's pretty bad, but I am on day three of antibiotics, so I'm starting to see the light. I felt okay enough to put on some makeup today and film, but if my voice sounds weird or if I do like start itching my nose, that's why I'm gonna try to keep that to a minimum. But if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Linda. I'm a cruelty-free beauty YouTuber. I always wanna help you decide whether or not makeup, skincare, hair care products are worth your money, whether they're drugstore price, luxury high-end, I just want you spending your money wisely, but also 2022 is my very first low buy year. So I'm trying to be really careful about what I bring into my collection, only bringing in new items if they really, really, really spark joy, or if they fill a void in my makeup collection, if you will. So if that's something you're into as you're watching this, I would love if you'd subscribe and become a part of the Rockstar fam. Let's jump right into these palettes. I think some of my answers might surprise you, whereas other ones you're gonna be like, no shit, Linda. Let's start with this one off the bat. So this is a very old palette. This is my Sugar Pill Pro palette, okay? I bought this at one of the very first IMATS that I ever went to. And IMATS was the International Makeup Artist Trade Show. It used to take place in New York. I think it might still, but because of COVID, there hasn't been one in quite some time. But anyway, this was such an expensive purchase for me because at the time that I went, I was not making a whole lot of money and I couldn't afford a whole lot. And I remember, I want to say that this was 90 or a hundred dollars at the show, which if you see the size of these pans, they are huge. It is worth that money. But if this palette, this exact palette was released today, would I purchase it? And the answer is going to be no, but let me explain when the pro palette first came out, these colors were what you got. You couldn't pick what colors went into this. You just got what they had. Nowadays, if you get one of their pro palettes, you get to choose which colors come in there. So if I'm being honest, this hot pink, I never ever use. I don't like hot pink on my eyes. It's not something that I gravitate towards. This kind of like mauvey purple, I never ever use. It is just not something I dig into. Even this like green, and green is my favorite color of eyeshadow, but this specific color of green, I don't really use. Everything else, I use this and I love it. The quality of Sugar Pill eyeshadows are amazing, but this palette where you couldn't choose which colors you got, I wouldn't do that again. I, I wouldn't, I would do it where I could make my own palette, but I wouldn't do it like this again, I don't think, because again, like what's the point if there are colors I'm not using? Even this, like, did I point to this teal color already? I just don't really use it. Now, again, these primary, like this red, orange, yellow, blue, um, I think this is called absinthe, this purple, oh my God, poison plum, just, I love so many of these, but in this iteration, I wouldn't. Also, like, I'm not a big fan anymore of like massive eyeshadow palettes, even though I have two in this collection that I'm gonna talk about. But things like this, like this has always been kind of difficult to store. It is like, what is it, the size of my forearm? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. That's what she said. But still, I guess first one off the bat is one that I wouldn't repurchase. Let's go with this little beauty. Now, this is the only palette that is in my pile right now that I did receive in PR. So I do wanna say that everything else I did purchase with my own money, but I do still wanna say, the Kaleidos Flower Punk palette. If this was released today, would I buy it? And the answer is yes. These grungy tones 
just have my heart and soul. And still, when I look at this palette, I think it's one of the most unique color stories I've ever seen. It is the epitome to me of flower punk. Like I love these, you know, neutral kind of like sparkly pastel tones combined with the grunginess of this side. I love this color story. I love this packaging. And I, I know you should never purchase something based off of packaging, but like this, and you've got the mirror on the other side and like, it's just magnetic, which makes things nice and easy. Did I put it on upside down? Nope. I just adore this palette and the quality is Kaleidos quality. It is so beautiful. It's so good. I think that this is probably one of the coolest palettes to me that they've ever come out with. So yeah, I'd repurchase. Okay, let's dig into a Melt palette. Now, if you don't know, Melt Cosmetics is probably my favorite makeup brand as a whole. Anytime they come out with something, I am like a rabid feral cat where I'm like, yeah, I need that. What the hell? What? Why did I do that? Maybe I should call myself a lemming instead, but basically anytime Melt comes out with something, I'm like, I am paying attention. So the Rust palette. I feel like this is one of the palettes that I never hear people come back to and refer to when they're talking about Melt Cosmetics. They want to talk about the Muerte palette. They want to talk about the Vita palette, about the 420 palette. They never want to talk about the Rust palette. So here's my, my answer for this. If this came out today, would I repurchase? I wouldn't even think for two seconds before repurchasing this. Okay, so not only is it the Melt quality that I know and love, this for me is an everyday dream. And not just for me, I feel like for literally anyone, this is an everyday dream. Yes, it's a bunch of browns and bronzes and golds. But over here, you have some very neutrals that you can, like very neutral tones that you can pump things up with. You've got, is it Lorelei? No, I'm sorry, Erode, that is this bright mustardy yellow. And just, I don't know, I feel like there's such a good mix of browns in here. And yes, this is a warm tone palette. If you prefer cool tones, you obviously will not like this, but, this palette to me, first of all, it is some of the best melt quality. Melt can sometimes be a little finicky with some of the quality or it can be like a little bit different between palette to palette. This is the amazing melt quality where it takes me like two seconds to create a look with this that I love. And I have gone super dark and smoky with things like in this range and I've gone super neutral and like work friendly with stuff in this range. So would I repurchase the melt rust palette? You couldn't hold me back from buying this. If for some weird reason, this is one of those palettes that if I ever lost it, I would buy it immediately. Let's go with another neutral palette. So this is the Natasha Denona Mini Nude. And again, it is one of these like little teeny tiny palettes that has five different shades. We have two mattes and three shimmers. It's so funny because I bought this as like an add-on to a bigger Sephora order that I was doing. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I just like throw that in there? It's $25. I know I love Natasha Denona's quality. Let me just throw it in there. I did not think that this would be one of my favorite little palettes of all time. I have taken this on any trip that I've gone on, obviously because of the size, but also because it's so easy to create different looks with it, which you wouldn't think from a five pan eyeshadow palette that is this teeny tiny, okay? Now, if there's one eyeshadow palette in my entire collection that I would literally recommend to everyone, no matter what I know about them with makeup, whether I know that they wear lots of makeup, they like colorful makeup, they like only neutrals, they like only green eyeshadow, whatever, it would literally be this one because I think that you can make out of it what you want. You can do a calm, quiet, neutral look. You can do a fierce, freaking smoky eye. You can do all shimmers. You can do all matte. I feel like for such a tiny palette, this packs such a punch that everyone should have this in their collection. I just, I really love it. It's $25, and again, I know this is tiny. I know it is, and I know that you can get palettes for $3 from e.l.f. that are about this size, but the quality here makes this worth it, and it's the one that I think everyone should own. Is that overly dramatic? I don't care. This is my channel. Welcome. All right, let's go with this palette. Um, so this is the It's Likely Makeup Ugly Palette. And what this is, is a bright, bright, vibrant rainbow palette. The quality on this is so damn good. These shimmers are so bright. The pigmented uh, eyeshadow is at the top. So you've got eight mattes and you've got four shimmers. They are so good. A lot of these shimmers, by the way, are more like toppers. So you can really punch up those mattes, which I think is a really cool concept. So if this palette was released today, would I purchase it? 
The reason I'm saying that is because personally now, and I did not purchase this that long ago, I like there to be some neutrals mixed into each palette. Now I have enough eyeshadows in my collection where I can mix and match multiple palettes to create whatever look that I want, okay? But I prefer to bring out one palette at a time and not have to dip into 15 different palettes. So I feel like if this had had maybe like one neutral crease color, like a, a light brown, or maybe a white or a black, or something just a little bit more neutral, then I would say yes. But as it stands where it's just a rainbow palette, I think that I wouldn't personally repurchase this again. But I wanna know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you need to have neutrals when, in a palette when you buy it? Do you care about having any neutrals in a palette? Because I know that so many people don't care and that's awesome. Just for me, I personally like to have at least one shade where I can like blend out the other colors or anything like that, but I'm really curious to know your thoughts. Let's do another melt palette. So this is the Amor y Mariposas palette. This was their holiday collection last year. I also named this my best palette of 2021. So if this was released today, would I still purchase it? And yes, okay, let me tell you why I would repurchase this. First of all, like we just talked about, we definitely have some neutrals in here in this like middle row that I can blend out with, which makes me happy. But you also have some deep, dark, smoky shades that you can really like sexify a look with. And I don't know if sexify is a word, but it is now, so take that Webster's. But I love that you can deepen up a look and there's also like all these jewel tones, but you've got these warm fiery tones in the center too, that I feel like really make this palette special. Just the combination overall. And I feel like the artwork on the front is so indicative of what's inside. Like, you know, you've got the smokiness out here. You've got the bright orange from the Monarch Butterfly. You've got these greens. You've got like from the hummingbirds in the center, you've got these pinks, it's just, it's so beautiful. I feel like this palette was really, really underrated and I don't understand why. I really think it's so, so beautiful and I love this color story. It just makes me happy looking at it. Finally, we have one more. We already went through all of those. So this is one of the newest palettes in my collection that I've purchased. Is this the newest one? No, it's not the newest, but it's one of. And that is the Michaela and Glam Light palette. I just love this little confetti on the inside. It's so cute. This is a very jewel toned, a very cool toned palette for the most part, but you still have some like warm golds in here. Now, what's interesting to me is that I just realized I'm sort of contradicting myself because this palette does not have any real neutral tones, but I'll explain to you why that doesn't matter to me. And if this was coming out today, would I buy it again? Absolutely. First of all, I did not try Glam Light palettes before this, so I did not know. I did not know the quality. You all told me but I didn't listen and now I'm listening, okay? The quality is beautiful on this. It's so beautiful, it's so easy to work with. But let me go back to what I was saying about the no neutrals part, blah, blah, blah. Because you have some of these lighter tones, like you've got this pastel kind of purple, you've got the very light blue, you've got this very light green, but you've also got these really deep shades. I do feel like you can make a cohesive look with just this palette, without using another palette. Now, no, there's no brown shades in there. And I wanna be clear, when I say more neutrals or something to blend out other colors, I don't only mean brown. What I mean is something that can blend the other colors out. And for example, if you were to do a bright, vibrant blue look, you could easily blend it out with this lighter blue and have that go into the eyebrow and just look beautiful. I just, I really think that they did a great job, that Michaela did a great job picking out this color story this still really inspires me. Even though it's big and I don't tend to like these large palettes, this color story inspires me and makes me want to play with makeup. It makes me want to have fun with makeup. So that's something else I always look for in my palettes at this point. But yeah, this is definitely one I would repurchase. So I wonder if it says something about me that five palettes I would repurchase, but then the two that I wouldn't are both just solid rainbow palettes. Hmm. I do want to say again, I think it comes back to, I like there to be some colors to blend something out with. I like to have choice if that's an option, like with the Sugar Pill Pro palette, how you can make your own now. I just, uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to explain because am I getting rid of either of these? No, 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 no. Like not only have these survived several declutters, but like I love these two palettes. I keep smacking my hat. I am not used to being a hat person. <laughs> 
but I love these two palettes. I will be keeping them, but I just want to be honest, like, oh, would I repurchase them? And those two, probably not. The other five, hell yes. So I want you to let me know in the comments down below if you have any of these palettes, any of these specific seven palettes, would you repurchase them still if they were coming out today? Very curious to know your opinion. That is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if my voice started to get a little crazy near the end because um, I am still not feeling 100%, but I hope you, my friend, are feeling 100%. I hope you're feeling 110% because you know what? You deserve it. If you liked this video, I would love if you give it a thumbs up. That always helps out my channel so, so much more than you will ever know. You all can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Those are all Glitter Fallout. And as always and forever, you are super freaking rock stars. I love you so much with my whole heart, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.